Hey everyone, it's John and today what we're going to be doing is doing some automated network testing by using Napalm Validate, so let's do it. Now the way Napalm Validate works is that it uses the concept of getters. Now getters are really just an abstraction layer for your show commands. What this means is that you can get your information in a consistent manner across multiple vendors by using the same command and have that show output returned in a consistent format in JSON. And by returning this data in a consistent format, it makes it really easy for us to write a validation file to test that output against what we expect to see. So let's see what getters we can use. So if we go to the Napalm website, and I just type in Napalm getters. Now if we scroll down, we're going to see a list of all these getters, as well as the platforms in which they're supported. So you can get a lot of different information. You can get ARP table information, configuration information, environment information, BGP information, just take your pick. And the one I'm going to get is GetFax, which is supported across all platforms, EOS right through to NXOS. So what I'll do is I'll just close this down and I'll pull up a terminal. So if I go into my run book, I do vim run. Okay, so we've got a fairly typical script. We're saying from Nornir and we're importing the init Nornir function. We're saying from Nornir plugins task networking and we're importing the napalm get function. This is going to allow us to use our napalm getters as well as importing the print result function. Next, we're going to initialize Nornir by creating an NR variable and using the init Nornir function and telling Nornir where our configuration file, which is called config.yaml. After that, we've created a custom function called get test with the argument task. And then all we're doing is saying task and using the run method and then specifying our function napalm get, which is what we got here. And then telling napalm what is the getter we want to use. Well, the getter we're going to use is called get facts. After that, we're going to create another variable called result and tell Nornir to run the custom task called get task and then print out the results at the end. So if we do a Python 3 run one, and Nornir has used Napalm Validate to gather all the facts about our devices. So what we need to do to use Napalm Validate is to create a validation test file. That way we can compare the output of this result with the test file. So let's do that. So what I like to do when I create these validation test files is to first run the getter just like we did there so that we've got something to compare to. That way we have a general template to build our test file. So what I'll do is I'll go into my directory, validate, and I'll create a directory called, I don't know, just tests, simple as that. And we'll go into that directory. Now what I'm going to do is create a file just called, I don't know, we'll just call it getfacts.yaml. Now the validation test file has to be written in YAML format and the getter returns the output, as you can see there on the left, in JSON. So there's a little bit of translation to do, but you're going to see it's not really hard at all. So what we'll do is, we'll go into this file. Now because it's a YAML file, we'll be doing our three hyphens at the top. And then what we need to do, we need to specify in our test file, what is the getter we're going to be using. So we do that by doing a hyphen and then giving the getter name. So we're using the get underscore facts and we just do a colon. So we have our get facts key in the outermost level here and we've denoted that in our validation file by using get facts here. Now within this key, we've got a bunch of other keys. We've got FQDN, hostname, interface list, model, OS version, serial number, uptime, and vendor. Now they're all one level in, so the way we specify that in our YAML file is to do two spaces inward. Now it's important to note as well is that Napalm Validate doesn't require you to fill in all of the information which you see here. If you just want to validate the host name, you can just pick that. If you want to validate the model and the OS version, but leave out the vendor, that's fine too. It's completely up to you. So what we're going to validate first is that all of our devices have the model iOS V, as well as that the uptime is actually over 3000 seconds. So like I say, we need to go in one level. So the way we do that is do two spaces and then we specify the name of the key. We are trying to validate the model. So we just type model and then specify what is the value? The value we're looking for to make sure that everyone has is iOS V. Okay. And again, we're going to check the uptime. That is on the same indentation level. So we just keep it at two spaces in. So uptime. 
Now here's the cool part, we can still use kind of Pythonic logic here, we don't need to specify an exact value. What we can say is we just want to validate that we are over 3000 seconds, call it. So we're doing pretty much the same thing, this time we're importing napalm validates. And what we need to do is to give napalm validate the source of our test file. So all we need to do is specify the path. So we're in the tests and the name of the file is getfax.yaml. And that's us now. So all we need to do is run this and we do a Python 3 run to. And napalm has validated all of our configurations are in fact correct. So the way you can quickly check this is the key here. It says complies true complies true and this is true of all the devices moving on up but let's make a slight amendment to this validation file so let's go back into our validation file so let's see what a fail might look like so what we'll do is we'll add in the additional check for the host name and we'll check that everyone has the host name r8 this is obviously not true it's only going to be true for r8 the rest should fail on this point so to test for the host name we just simply type in the host name key now, I will say that it's not actually important that hostname is below uptime and below model. The reality is they're all at the same indentation level, so that's all that matters because we're working in the form of a dictionary here. So the hostname we're trying to validate is we're going to say make sure that everyone has the hostname R8, which is obviously not going to be true. And now what we'll do is we'll save this and rerun the script. And we do a Python 3 run 2. Now straight away, as expected, we can see that R8 does in fact comply. It says complies true, okay? So if we go up to R7, we can see that complies is at the value false. And if we dig in a little bit, we can see that the hostname value, its actual value is R7, so it doesn't comply because the expected value was R8, so it doesn't actually comply. However, when it comes to the model, it does comply. And when it comes to the uptime, it does comply. So our only failure here is this part here. Its actual value is R7 and it's expecting R8. And this is true for 654321. So yeah, that's the end of the introduction to using Napalm Validate. It's really useful for your automated network testing. And it has other cool features such as strict mode, which ensures that you have exactly what you have in your configuration file and not just that what is in your configuration file is present somewhere. That means if you're using strict mode and you specify that you must have VLANs 10 and 20, if you also have an additional VLAN 30, it's going to fail because it only expects 10 and 20. So there's a lot of things you can do with Napalm Validate. And like I say, I'll be covering a lot more of this stuff in a lot more detail in my CBT Nuggets course. So I would definitely encourage you, if you're interested in network automation, to go check that out. I'll leave the links in the description. So thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon.